Maybe this will work better. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about Australia. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, before I say anything, I want to say that Australians, from what I know, are very friendly. I love their English. I love their accent. Um, and, you know, they are very friendly and they're happy-go-lucky. And, you know, so before I say anything, <laughs> so... Hello, Australians. <laughs> but, you know, traveling with a disability can be different from one country to another, as we know. So um, there are some information here in regards to Australia, and I will leave these links down below. Now, you might wonder, what the heck are you using a visor for, Lisa? <laughs> so it's not because I'm talking about Australia. It's just because in the morning, the sun just blares in. Now I do have a, uh, I do have a cover, you know, but still it irritates my eyes a little bit. So I'm wearing a little visor here. So um, <laughs> bear with me with the style here this morning. <laughs> so. Anyway, <laughs> Australia, so I'm reading from a Australia.com, and I'll leave all the links that I'm using uh, so that you can take a look at um, these, uh, I this information. So accessible travel, um, let me see here, uh, to get around. So this, this page is, is giving you know all kinds of information and travel information. So I will put that down below, but there's other pages that I found um, that are really important. So this one is from Disabled World, <coughs> and they have a summary here about you know traveling to Australia. So Australia is a country in the Southern Hemisphere, blah, blah, blah. Sydney is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So uh, hello, Sydney. So located, and then talks about location, uh, traveling in Australia with this is disability. So the country's major airlines are equipped to cater for a whole wide range of uh, disability needs. So that's important to hear. Legislative arrangements in Australia require that there are ad adequate services for people with disabilities on transport, tours, and hotels, okay? Planning is always an important part <laughs> of ensuring any holiday is successful. So, you know, and, and this is with any country. You really want to, sometimes if you really don't know the country, um, you know, using a, a travel agent might be, uh, and might be required or almost strongly suggested uh, because, you know, you want to make sure you hit all the right spots. So, travel agents, you may want to find a full service agent. Full service agent. So, the vocabulary is also important here. Um, that, uh, that can help you with the flight, hotel, accessible van, rents, and anything else you may need. Uh, so, so that's really important. So Australians on DSP traveling overseas. Now this is for Australians, so we're going to skip that one. <laughs> so there is a page that I pulled up here that gives us um, advice uh, for travels with uh, travelers with, with disabilities. So this is coming from Smart Traveler. <coughs> And it's a really good summary. So in many, country, in many countries have the same access services or support for people with disabilities as Australia. It doesn't mean you can travel. Uh, it just means that you, it doesn't mean you can't travel. It just means you may have uh, more challenges to overcome. Australia is Australia. It has cracks. Uh, snakes, <laughs> depending on where you're going to go. <laughs> but <laughs> crocs are dangerous, okay, people? You may also face other risks unique to you and your disability, whether it is physical, 
sensory, psychiatric, neurological, or cognitive. So you really want to talk to your doctor and say, hey, I really want to go to Australia, um, but uh, what do I need to do? You know, do you recommend that I travel to Australia or not? So, you know, I know some of us are very, very stubborn, but you've got to hear the doctor out. You know, and if you're going to go to XYZ, you know, is it recommended? So explore, so it has all kinds of links that you need to, that really uh, are good topics. You know, explore this page to learn about getting medical advice before you go, travel insurance. So travel insurance is recommended for any country where you go. So not just Australia and the Crocs. Uh, accessible air and sea travel, so that's also recommended. Taking equipment or service animals, and they're a little different with service animals. I think they require two weeks uh, quarantine for service animals. Uh, I think they also require a letter from uh, uh, a doctor or a vet, so probably maybe b both, just to be on the safe, safe side. Accessible hotels, tours, and activities. So uh, they have all of that set up because people with disabilities are going uh, to Australia to, to have a great time. Getting around with a disability, so it gives all of that, and discrimination. So listen to me, folks. Um, in any country, you can be discriminated against with your disability, even in the U.S., as we know. So it might happen in the U.K., might happen in Ireland, could happen in Australia, could happen in any country. So you really need to be prepared for that, open to that, and, and just know and just practice some of those uh, sentences, some of those responses that we've talked about in the past. Make sure you research your destination. You know, if you're going out in the boondocks or you're going out to a particular city. So also read the Australian government's Travel Secure. So the link is in here, advice for travelers with special circumstances. So they don't even call it disabilities. Special circumstances. So they're polite. See? <laughs> Told you they were friendly. <laughs> Get medical advice before you go, and that's anywhere. Um, <coughs> see your doctor. If your advice, uh, if your advice not to travel uh, by a medical professional, then <laughs> don't go. <laughs> I love that sentence. <laughs> so yeah. You're putting yourself and your family or other traveling companions at serious risk, truly. So you don't want to spoil everybody's trip. Uh, if you're fit to travel, talk to your doctor about how you'll manage your health while you're away and health checks and vaccinations you need. Medical care overseas, so that's why it's important to get the insurance in some destinations, you may not have access to medical care or medications you need, so take them along. If you need uh, specialized care, it may be more expensive uh, than, more, than more common medical services. Now, I want to say something about medications here. If you're on controlled substances, you want to make sure that they are allowed in the country you're going, such as Australia. So some people don't check this, and then they end up in legal quandary. So you want to check and make sure that the, the if, if it's a controlled substance here in the United States, check in Australia, make sure that there's no uh, rules and regulations about that particular uh, controlled substance. So that's really important. Before you go, find out if uh, any specialized medical care you need is available where you'll be going. So if you have to check up with a doctor or if you need a nurse to give you an injection, whatever it might be, make sure you know <coughs> how you can access medical care over there. See the health section of the travel advisory for your destination. So there's a link on this page for that. So it's a it's very uh, useful page. Get travel insurance which we've already talked about, you know, you need to declare uh, what this travel insurance is for, you need to declare your disability, um, all that kind of stuff. You need to be upfront so that the insurance company insures you for the right things and for the right reason. So 
<coughs> to read our general advice about travel insurance. So they even have a page for that. Declare your disability. So that's really, really important. Uh, so it doesn't end up costing you, uh, you know, a foot and an arm and, and a head and whatever else. So insurers can't deny you coverage, uh, but that would be discrimination. However, it may cost you more to get coverage for your disability because you didn't declare it, as it does with any pre-existing health conditions. So you, you need to be upfront with the uh, health insurance. So check your policy. Uh, policy rules uh, may vary for different disabilities. So check if your policy will cover items or services you may need, such as replacing a medical device, seeing a local doctor, filling prescriptions or getting a new medication, uh, medical evacuation costs. So it, there could be a flood, there could be a storm or whatever you need to be evacuated uh, because of your disability or you uh, became very ill and you need to uh, be evacuated or a croc bit your leg off and you need to be evacuated or a snake bit you in the arm and you need to be evacuated. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> it could be any of those. <laughs> Choose a policy that covers your disability. So that would be very smart. Uh, accessible air and sea travel. So there's a couple links for that. Find the right airline or cruise ship. So that's really important. And you might have to call them directly. It's my advice. Uh, some medical equipment may be restricted on flights. So such as our lovely wheelchairs. <laughs> so in our batteries. So you need to ask. Research your travel provider and the airport or seaport where you will, be, uh, you will depart and arrive. Know what to expect and what you can ask for at the port uh, when you board uh, during the journey. And that is, you know, if you need to be transferred or picked up and transferred over to something, um, it, then you need to make sure that they have the personnel for that. Uh, so it has flying safely with a disability, so they have a link for that. So taking equipment or service animals, so that's really important. Uh, there is a link for that, so travelers with special circumstances. Again, they don't say disability, so I'm telling you, Australians are very friendly. <laughs> so in service animals, I saw somewhere in, in the airport, in an airport information, that animals have to, service animals have to be in quarantine for two weeks. Uh, before your travel. So uh, that's really important to know and to confirm. Uh, here it is, service animals. Uh, take To take a, uh, an animal overseas, your animal may have to, and I think in Australia is one of them, be in quarantine for a specific period of time, get vaccinated before your travel, travel with supporting documents for, uh, from the vet. So that's really important. Uh, this could apply uh, when you enter or leave Australia uh, and your destination. So there's no links, oh there is a link, okay. Uh, Department of Agriculture or in, in the website, so you wanna go there. Accessible hotels or tours, so uh, research your destination. So whether you're going to Sydney or other places uh, before you go, not in the middle of your trip, uh, accessible <laughs> travel online uh, resource ebook, traveling with disability, Europe uh, network for access tourism, travelers with disabilities, and foreign travel for uh, disabled people. So, <coughs> so there's links for that. So this page is full of information there's no reason for you to say, oops, I forgot. So hotels, research local hotels before you book. Uh, not all hotels will offer the same accessible facilities as you're used, as, as you're used to in Australia. So I'm sure some, some hotels are, uh, don't have any accessibility and others do tours. Talk to your hotel, travel agent, airline, cruise, ship, or tour operator. So that's really important to figure out, are they accessible? So 
And I, I would say to uh, use a, if you're going for a tour, use, you know, uh, a tour company that books for people with disabilities. Uh, also, there's a general advice for activities you plan to do. So there's a link for that. Uh, getting around with a disability. You may have difficulty getting around <laughs> because Australia is not built in a flat plain. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rock, okay, it's a big, it's a big island. Many countries have poor infrastructure. In some areas of Australia, they have poor infrastructure. Uh, for example, there may be poorly paved paths, hazards, hazardous, such as unmarked potholes, sharp objects, uh, or exposed electrical wires, inaccessible public transport and buildings, minimal sign postings, uh, lack of accessible toilets <coughs> and crocodiles. <laughs> Before you go, find out about the challenges uh, specific to your destination and your disability. Also see our general advice about getting around. So there's a link for that. Discrimination. You may encounter very different treatment overseas than you're used to used to in Australia. In some destinations, there are social stigmas about disabilities. People may discriminate against you. So just be ready, uh, you know, build up that, that strength and that uh, humility and a proper answer to any rough comments that you may receive. It may be legal to discriminate, and I think in Australia it is. In many destinations, people with disabilities have little or no legal protection or rights. So um, just be aware. Overlapping risks, uh, different aspects, and they're warning you for a reason. Different aspects of your, uh, your identity can ex expose you to overlapping forms of discrimination and increase the risks you might face. So this is sometimes referred to as intersectionality, interesting. Aspects of your identity can uh, include your color, race, identity, religion, nationality, age, gender, sex, sex, sexual orientation, ability, and mental health. So, and we have to expect that in any country you travel, not just Australia. So we can't blame it all on Australia. <laughs> Maybe on the crocodiles. No, wait, the snakes. I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to check that out. Read this advice along with our advice among women, LGBTQ, or LGBTI, color, race, or religion, uh, age, and mental health to understand the different risks you may face. How the Australian government can help you overseas. There's a link for that. So a uh, counselor service charter what we can do now this is a travel smart travel uh, agency i think so what we can do we can provide emergency counselor we can give uh you a list of local english speaking medical professionals well, in australia they speak english it's just a little different <laughs> and so medical assistance overseas we can provide a list of local lawyers just in case you get in a bar fight uh we can uh with your permission contact your family if you suffer a medical emergency, we cannot do, and probably this is for most agencies, we cannot intervene on your behalf with uh, have trouble accessing facilities or services. We can't provide uh, specific advice or disability services or access at your destination. We can't give you medical advice or pay for your medical expenses. We can't guarantee your health and safety overseas. Uh, we can't get you out of trouble <laughs> if you've been arrested or jailed. <laughs> so <laughs> true, you know, I, I get that wholeheartedly. It's illegal to carry some medications overseas, and that's what I was saying earlier. You must check and meet these laws. Uh, you can't help you. We can't help you if you uh, break any local law. So you, you need to be careful with what you're carrying overseas. 
uh, final tips before you go. See your doctor, get travel insurance, check that you uh, can take the medic medical equipment and medications with you. If you have a service animal, ask your airline about what you need to do to be able to do that and talk to your uh, travel companions about any physical or emotional support. Tell your travel <coughs> your uh, tell your travel provider, sorry, I have a cramp um, about your disability. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, there's all kinds of links. So this is really an important uh, page, and you don't have to go all over the Internet trying to find the information you need. But in general, I would say Australians are very friendly. Uh, I kind of doubt you would run into any issues, especially if you're using a travel agency. They will help you throughout your trip. So it's enjoyable. So you go to the places that, you know, you have access to. Um, so I'll put that down below in the description box. <coughs> so, you know, accessible travel around Australia is another page I'll put in there. This is from Australia, Australia.com. So they have all kinds of advice and, and things you need to, links, getting around, experiences. Uh, so stay, where to stay, experiences, things to know. So um, this page is also useful. I'm not going to read it because you know how to read English, so especially mine. So <laughs> I do not speak Australian. <laughs> so <coughs> just know if you really want to go to Australia, that is great. Don't let anything, any one of these uh, negative comments, uh, which they're just warning you about that might happen um, that uh, you know you you might need so uh, you might need to know that you might need to be prepared for that so check your weather channel <laughs> for Australia <laughs> and make sure you're gonna have an enjoyable time uh, the Australians want you to have an enjoyable time <coughs> and they want you to come back <laughs> and bring your money with you <laughs> so <laughs> And your wheelchair <laughs> to help you out. No, but, you know, Australians are, are very friendly. I think they've gotten more used to uh, tourists who have disabilities. They've probably seen us around a lot more. So, so I wouldn't worry. And uh, if you're going to go by yourself, well, you know, read everything you need to read. Uh, if you're going to tra travel with an agency, that would be great, and pick one that deals with disabilities, and I'm sure you'll have a wonderful, great time. So just check the links that I put down in the description box and have fun in Australia. <laughs>